people with low levels of vitamin D seem to be at higher risk for developing MS. And people with MS that have low levels of vitamin D seem to have worse outcomes. Does having adequate levels of vitamin D influence if we develop MS or the course of our MS? In today's video, I'm going to share what I found in the studies about vitamin D and multiple sclerosis. I'll also share some information on other health conditions that may be affected by our vitamin D levels. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hatch, and I'm glad you're here. If you're new to the channel, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And even if you're not new here, if you enjoy content like this, could you please hit the like button, the thumbs up under the video? This is really helpful because it helps to support the channel and it will help it to reach more people. Thanks. It's fall here in the Northeast and the weather's starting to get chilly. So I'm not spending as much time outside. And when I am outside, we're in a lot more clothes. What does this have to do with vitamin D? Vitamin D is actually a hormone that our bodies produce when our skin is exposed to natural sunlight. When we spend less time outside or if our skin is covered up when we are outside, our vitamin D levels may fall and we may need to adjust our vitamin D supplement amounts. Also, people with MS may spend less time outside or out in sunlight during the warmer months because of heat sensitivity, further increasing the risk for vitamin D deficiency. Do you take vitamin D? Let me know in the comments below. In addition to taking my disease-modifying treatment, I do five things to help me live well with my MS. I eat a whole food plant-based diet, I exercise regularly, I try to get good sleep, I practice mindfulness, and I take supplements under the guidance of my neurologist and my naturopathic doctor. I take several different supplements to help me live well and maintain my health, and one of them is vitamin D3. I highly encourage you to speak with your doctors about getting blood work done to see if you may benefit from taking supplements. Two that are particularly important, in my opinion, are vitamin D3 and B12, and I'll do another video on B12 soon. So what does vitamin D have to do with the risk of developing MS and the course of our MS? According to the National MS Society, several epidemiological studies, studies of populations, have shown that low vitamin D is one of several risk factors that can contribute to the development of MS. Other studies have suggested that low vitamin D may be associated with more MS activity. Hmm. And according to the Cleveland Clinic, it's theorized that the amount of sunlight exposure affects the production of vitamin D. And the hormonal form of vitamin D may be a selective immune regulator and potentially could inhibit the development of the disease. Some studies indicate that relapse rates were decreased in MS patients taking higher oral supplements of vitamin D, but the data is limited. And according to this study released in 2021, living south of 35 degrees latitude during one's first 10 years of life is associated with a 50% lower risk of developing multiple sclerosis. It went on to say that some studies have found that high-dose vitamin D supplementation up to 14,000 international units a day alone or as an add-on treatment has a significant effect on decreasing the relapse rate and improving inflammation markers, as well as abnormalities on MRIs in people with MS. Cool. So it looks like vitamin D and exposure to sunlight are important when it comes to developing MS and how the disease progresses. Yeah, not so fast. Also from the National MS Society in an update from April of 2023, Reports suggest that vitamin D supplements do not reduce ongoing MS disease activity. There were two studies, one from the U.S. and one from New Zealand, that cast some doubts on vitamin D and how it could benefit people with MS. In the U.S. study, they found that there was no evidence that high-dose vitamin D supplements reduce MS activity, including relapse and MRI-detected brain lesions. So high-dose vitamin D doesn't help? And also in the New Zealand study, where they compared a placebo to those taking vitamin D supplements, the investigators found no difference in the number of people in each treatment arm who went on to develop definite MS. Okay, so what are we to believe and what are we to do? Excellent questions. Before we get to the answers, let's take a quick look 
at what other diseases and health outcomes vitamin D levels are associated with. According to the Harvard School of Public Health, vitamin D is known to help the body absorb and retain calcium and phosphorus. Both are critical for bone health. Did you know that people with MS are at an increased risk of developing osteoporosis due to several factors, including problems with mobility, long-term exposure to steroids, and vitamin D deficiency? It's true. Vitamin D may reduce cancer cell growth as well. Animal and laboratory studies have found that vitamin D can inhibit the development of tumors and slow the growth of existing tumors, including those from the breast, ovary, colon, prostate, and brain. In humans, epidemiological studies show that higher serum levels of vitamin D are associated with substantially lower rates of colon, pancreatic, prostate, and other cancers. Vitamin D may also play a role in heart disease. Meta-analysis of epidemiological studies have found that people with the lowest serum levels of vitamin D had a significantly increased risk of strokes and any heart disease event compared with those who had the highest levels. Now, this one is not conclusive. It may be those that had the high vitamin D levels were outside more and moving their bodies more, or there may have been other factors involved. Type 2 Diabetes Risk The Nurses Health Study, one of the largest and longest-running health studies in the world, found vitamin D and calcium intakes from diet and supplements were addressed throughout the 20-year study. The authors found that when comparing the women with the highest intakes of vitamin D from supplements, with women with the lowest intakes, there was a 13% lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Vitamin D and Cognitive Decline In an analysis of more than 427,000 white European participants using Mendelian randomization, a 54% higher risk of dementia was seen among participants with low vitamin D blood levels of less than 25 nanomoles per liter, compared with those having adequate levels of 50 nanomoles per liter. And back to the information from the Cleveland Clinic, they state there's also been increasing evidence that deficiency may also increase risk for developing cardiovascular disease and certain types of cancers, such as uterine, breast, prostate, and colon. So it looks like vitamin D is pretty important, but do we need to take supplements? And are there risks with taking supplements? The recommended levels of vitamin D varies a bit depending on who you ask. The Overcoming MS program recommends levels between 150 to 225 nanomoles per liter, or 60 to 90 nanograms per milliliter. The National Institute of Health states in their vitamin D fact sheet that levels of 50 nanomoles per liter, 20 nanograms per milliliter, or above are adequate for most people for bone and overall health. And the Cleveland Clinic states that a sufficient level is 30 nanograms per milliliter or 75 nanomoles per liter. Luckily, vitamin D does not seem to get toxic until it reaches levels above 150 nanograms per milliliter or 375 nanomoles per liter. Most would need to take huge doses of vitamin D to reach these levels, so it's very safe. So how much should we take? Well, it depends on the desired level and your current level. It also could depend on how much time you're spending in the sun. Some of the recommendations I have seen suggest getting sun exposure for up to 15 minutes a day as close to all over as possible. This is enough to give us adequate vitamin D without raising our skin cancer risk. Unfortunately, in many areas, that's not possible because it gets too cold to go out without much clothing on so a supplementing may be needed. Back to the question about conflicting information out there about the benefits of vitamin D. I have three thoughts on this, and these are just my thoughts. On my channel, I share my thoughts on living well with MS. This does not mean that my thoughts are necessarily going to agree with your thoughts, and it also does not mean that my thoughts are medical advice. It just means that I'm thoughtful. Number one, there seems to be enough data and information to suggest that low vitamin D levels may be associated with developing MS and the course of our disease. And number two, and there's also enough compelling data to show that having adequate levels of vitamin D may help with our bone health and prevent other diseases such as type 2 diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. And number three, 
uh, supplementing with vitamin D is very, very safe. Because it's so safe and there's such good potential benefits to having adequate levels of vitamin D, I take a vitamin D3 supplement. I have regular blood work done to test my levels and adjust dosages as needed. Do you know your vitamin D levels? Have you talked with your doctor about them? Let me know in the comments below. Interested in more videos on living well with MS and chronic illness? Watch these videos next. Please like this video, subscribe, and subscribe to my newsletter using the link below. Until next time, be well.